Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Lindsay, I'm the fantasy fan. And I'm Danielle, your resident romantic. And we are friends. Till the book ends. And today we are bringing you a, a delicious sweet review of Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. Danielle has our lovely book here. <laughs> we both read our books. Um, we didn't tell each other any thoughts during it, which is always the hardest part. That's right. We always want to text each other during to, <laughs> to see where the other one's at. But we both have our opinions on this book. <laughs> this review is going to be having some spoilers in it, so absolutely because this out. is our what I think our third book club review now. Yeah, I think so. Um so this was of course my pick. I have read another book by Helena Hunting. I think it's called Shacking Up. I met I read another book by Helena Hunting and I didn't like it. <laughs> get out. No, seriously, get out. I like Helena Hunting. Um so the one the other one I read by her, I think it was Shacking Up. I really enjoyed it had a lot of like you know, steamy, sexy moments, but also fun rom-com moments. So I was like, I have this one. It sounds exciting. Let's read it. The synopsis is actually really short. It's basically just Blair has her own cupcake bar. She's ready to open it. On opening day, it turns out Ronan opens up his own bar right next to her. And what starts out as first competitive enemies turns into kind of friends and then maybe lovers. Some more. I think that's all you need to know, so let's dive in. Lindsay, what was your rating? So I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars. Okay. What about you? I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 okay. stars, so we're, so we're kind of in the okay. same area. So successful. Yes. yes. Um, just real quick before we start, what's your brief overview, you know, views on it? Brief thoughts on it? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I liked the book. I thought it was really cute. Um, I'm an enemies to lovers fan, uh, as everybody well knows here. So I enjoyed the fact that they had so much like witty banter in the beginning. Um, because like, I also enjoy baking shows. So I feel like this really, uh, encompassed a lot of the things that I enjoy. Um, and I liked Blair and her drive. So Blair's opening up this cupcake bar. So there's cupcakes, but also alcohol, which just sounds ideal. And I know, right? Like our awesome town needs sound? to get something like that because we would frequent that shit. Oh my gosh, yes! I thought that was really cute. And then obviously the guy opens up a bar next door named Ronan, and just cute. Like it was so much fun to see how Ronan likes to get on Blair's nerves, and he does it purposefully to kind yes. of like instigate it right, um, antagonize yeah. her for her to kind of fight back a little bit yeah it's, it's fun it was really cute i did like it what about you i really loved it i love the witty banter like yeah. you said i like this take on enemies to lovers because right from the start ronan is messing with her but not like to be spiteful and hateful not malicious, he does yeah. it to get a response from her to kind of be flirty so yeah. i really liked that start um those are the kinds of hate to love that i enjoy <laughs> I overall just really, really enjoyed it. There was only one big thing that I really had an issue with, but we will get to that when we break it down. Yes. So, um, characters. Favorite characters? Least favorite characters? I can't tell if Ronan or Blair is my favorite character. I loved yeah. both of them so much. Who were some of your favorite characters? Um, I really liked Ronan. <laughs> I, I do. I love Ronan because he's described as being like very hipster, but he has like tattoos. And yes. honestly, the whole time I, for some reason I was picturing, um, what's his name from Sons of Anarchy? I don't watch the show. I can't <sighs> tell you. The blonde one. He's played by Charlie Hunnam. Jax. Is that his? Jax from, I think, from Sons of Anarchy. So immediately I had my, you know, what I thought he looked like in my head and I was pleased. I loved Ronan. I thought he was really cute. And I enjoy the fact that he was not afraid to, like, be vulnerable and share yes, his feelings. I like that. And he was, like, really close with his family and his grandpa, oh, his which was so adorable. cute. <laughs> he has, like, a Scottish grandpa who technically the bar that Ronan is running is, is his, but right. Ronan has revamped it after the death of his grandmother. So he's taken over the bar and him and his grandpa's relationship is so cute. It is. It's absolutely adorable. I love the grandpa, it's though. Really, like, so funny. <laughs> not to be a spoiler, but when Blair meets the grandpa... Um, the grandpa's just like, call me Gramps, even though yeah. it's not even her grandpa. Like, yeah. He's so I adorable. Yeah. <laughs> Gramps was a favorite character. I know. Yeah. Absolutely. I think he, like, takes the, takes the cake. Takes yeah. the cupcake. Cake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. There's 5,000 more of those coming. <laughs> so many puns. Um, um all right. So let's get to the bad side. Who are some of your least favorite characters? Well, I think the, why this book didn't get a five out of five stars for me uh, was the weird family dynamic between Blair and her family. And I yes. think 
you were on the same page with me with that I one. I am. It's very it's unusual. Weird. So Blair's parents are divorced, but they married <laughs> each other's each other's siblings. Siblings. So her aunt is now her stepmother, and her uncle is now her stepdad, right. and they all live in the same house. Yeah, that that's the weird part to me. <laughs> like, if you're yeah. going to marry someone who's in the same relationship kind of area, that's fine. But literally, the dad, the mom, the uncle, the aunt, um, Blair's sister, and Blair's stepsister, who's also her cousin, all lives in this giant mansion, which the author oh. describes as tacky, which doesn't help the case. No. <laughs> it was just a very weird setup. It was. I didn't hate them so much as them themselves. I thought they were a fun, weird element, but you were also made to not like them. Yeah. My problem with them was that Blair did not handle the family dynamic well. Like, she was saying that they mean well, that they act yeah. like this, yet everyone, every female in the family was telling her that she needed to lose weight, that she needed yeah. to go on a diet, that she had to stop eating cupcakes, that uh, her dad and parents were telling her that the cupcake shop was never going to go well, yeah. and it was her little shop. And she just kept making excuses for them. So yeah. I think that's why I ended up hating the family. Yeah, and her family, we didn't mention this before, but her family runs a very successful restaurant business. Yes. Like, they own multiple like they're nationwide. high-class, fancy restaurants. And mm -hmm. so they wanted Blair to go into the family business, but she wanted to um, kind of break off and do her own thing. She obviously still has a love of baking, so she wanted to open her own cupcake shop instead of kind of buying into her parents' franchise. And they don't take her seriously at all. Like, they didn't come visit the shop on opening day. They literally, like you said, they refer to it as, like, her little shop or her right. little bakery. Like, mm -hmm. they have no idea how hard mm -hmm. she's been working and saving. They consider her, like, living below her means. And, right. like, it's... And she does elitist. mention how her family offers her money. Her mm -hmm. dad specifically offers her a lot of money to help her out, which is it's great. contingent. Right. But yeah. she's like, I know there's strings attached. They're going to have an opinion on how they want me to run this. And so she wants to do it completely herself. The other thing that I kind of didn't like about Blair specifically was that I think that the author really tried hard to make her not like other girls. So Blair has a very like 1950s stepmother style. <laughs> like she wears like fluffy skirts with, is it crinoline? Crinoline? Whatever that fluffy stuff is. I don't even know how is. to pronounce it. I just skipped And the amount it. of times that the author mentioned that she wears crinoline skirts or whatever, I was like, okay, we get it. She just really tried hard to make Blair so... 1950s like pinup like, girl uniquely outfitted yes so uniquely outfitted and she described it a lot and i get that as maybe as someone who doesn't care <laughs> about fashion it just i don't know it felt really <clears throat> annoying to me and like blair was always talking about how she's like i have the best ass out of my group and like but i just don't wear jeans but when i wear jeans everybody's like oh my gosh and she puts on a pair of jeans and ronan's like oh my god you're a different person like which, okay, we get it. You wear jeans and your butt is nice. Congrats. <laughs> like, Now, I, I slightly disagree in that I enjoyed her 1950s vibe, but I do see what you mean about Ronan commenting about, oh my gosh, you're wearing jeans, now you have legs. Yeah. I get if he can check out her ass better because there's not a <laughs> giant skirt fluffing over it, but you can see the legs just fine when you're wearing a skirt. So I don't know why the legs were the focus when know. she puts on a jean. I just, I don't know. I just feel like the author tried so hard to make her different and it kind of just made it annoying, my opinion, but... <laughs> I digress. Do we have any other characters we hate, or can we dive into the plot? Let's dive into the plot. All right, so my big issue, and Lindsay, I don't know if you felt this, I really loved the plot. I loved the buildup. There were a couple of things that you had to work through. There was essentially a restaurant chain moved into the building across the street from them, so it's going to be a problem for them with customers. And then also there was this competition between the two of them because a famous YouTuber was going to be coming to Seattle where they're located at, and she is well known for naming the best of whatever, you know, the best place to go visit for ice skating, the best place to go visit for a small town restaurant, stuff like that. So they were competing for that. So there were two possibilities of build up for this story. And you kind of had it there. Like it was building up a little mm -hmm. bit for the restaurant chain. That was a problem. It was building up a little bit for the YouTuber. But I got to the end yeah. and it felt like there was no actual climax. Like it mm -hmm. got to the end of those two challenges and then it just went on. Yeah, I yeah I see what you mean. It almost was like the build up was there, but then it, it was very anticlimactic to right. the point where it was kind of like it's over. Right. Like if I were to fine tune it, yes, I could find the climax. But it's not a good climax if I'm reading it and I get to the end and I'm like, wait, where's the climax? Yeah. Also, I agree. I, I was a little annoyed because the book itself 
um, resolved the issue of the YouTube challenge. Mm -hmm. However, the book itself did not resolve the restaurant chain. You had to read the epilogue to know what happened with the restaurant chain and how it affected them. I hated the epilogue. Which I, I, I thought the epilogue was pointless. pointless. It, like, it rapidly wrapped everything else up that yeah. you could have wrapped up in the actual story. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, I feel like the last maybe, like, ten pages of the book and then that part of the epilogue were so rushed. Yes! And I was like, it didn't need to be like that. Like, if she had included another, like, two chapters in the mm -hmm. book, I feel like it would have really put a nice little bow on things. You know, obviously it's like a rom-com book, so things right. are going to be wrapped up with a neat little bow. But it <laughs> just, course. it's just the way it happened was slightly mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. Right. Plus, I don't, I don't know. I always have a problem, massive spoiler, I always have a problem where the guy and the girl get together in the book, and then in the epilogue that's where the guy proposes, mm -hmm. and that happened in this book, and I don't know, it just bothers me when I have to read the epilogue to get the marriage, that I know that they're going to end up married anyway. Yeah. So, and they, like, that's just me. And they, also kept hinting at it, like, throughout, where the grandpa was like, when are you gonna marry her? When are you gonna marry her? And yeah. they, like, were like, you're gonna marry her, like, after five minutes of meeting her. And uh -huh. so it was like, okay, obviously, that that's happening, but also... Literally, like, right before Ronan proposed, she was like, we've only known each other for six months, so, like, didn't she say, like, I'm, like, we're not getting engaged yet, and then he, like, literally one page later proposes to her, and she's like, yes, and I was like, why put that part in there? Because it didn't really do anything. It kind of weirdly it contradicted contra yeah. itself. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was just a weird wrap-up at the end. I felt that the author was writing so well for most of it that she could have done better at the mm -hmm. ending. Also, this is a really weird pet peeve, but... The people on the cover do not, yes. are not the people that are described in the book. Like, it's true. Ronan never, he wears, A, plaid. That's his thing. Right. He wears plaid. He ha does have hipster glasses. He There's has none a, here. He has a beard too, He's, right? I don't think so. I thought he did. I don't know. Maybe. He's got some kind of facial hair. Tattoos. He looks like a banker. Ronan is not a banker. And she's like curvy and weird and quirky and like, I don't know, her hair's yellow. I don't know. I just... <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think that the people on the cover look like the people described in the book, which automatically turns me off. I don't know why. Well, I just have a stupid reason. I but. didn't have a problem with her, but I I was thinking that like yeah. multiple times throughout the book, I was like, this is not Ronan. This mm -hmm. might be you know, who was it, um, Raquel or Raphael that she met in <laughs> like yeah in culinary <laughs> school. Yeah, yeah, that could well, be him. Also, the author is always describing her as being like curdy and how like her sisters and and family members are like, you need to lose weight, you eat too many cupcakes, and she literally talks about how all she eats is cupcakes because she owns a cupcake bakery. So it's like, I have a slight pet peeve with authors who describe their characters as not being stick thin, and then on the cover making them stick thin. It's yeah. kind of, I feel like it's false advertising, I don't know. But, I don't know, it was a cute book, I did like it, you know, Ronan was a sweetie, and um, I we really like Ronan. <laughs> I do, Ronan. I love Ronan. Um, Ronan was adorable. And I thought Blair was a good character, and um, you know, her family does come around in the end, but I definitely think, like you said, I would have liked to seen her stand up to them a little more. Right. Um, because they were wackos. But overall, like I said, four out of five for me. 4.5 for me. We have, um, mini cupcakes for the occasion. If you saw my tongue was green throughout the video, that's because I pre cupcaked Uh, I should not have. <laughs> it's okay, lessons have been learned. <laughs> Who die in a cupcake batter. I'm just saying, you eat struggles. the frosting first before eating the cupcake. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments. No. I feel like I'm the only one who eats the frosting first. <laughs> she just, like, put teeth you into do. it. You do. You have to lick the entire frosting off first. No. No, <laughs> we will agree to disagree. But we agree on the book, so yes. <laughs> that's the main part. So thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Yes, tune in next time that we do a book club video so you can see what book we take a bite out of next. Oh, good one. <laughs>